Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK out foraging again. Um, today we're in Oxfordshire in uh, the grounds of Blenheim Palace, which is one of our favourite venues to run our courses. Um, and I'm here with Fabio today, a very inexperienced cameraman. He might get in front of the camera and show you some mushrooms later, but I have found something today that I've been looking for for a long time and I'm really really privileged to be able to show it to you guys because uh, it's quite an uncommon mushroom it's, it's classed as rare it's not on the red list but if you see this mushroom and you're not using it for educational purposes like I am today then you should leave it in the ground so let's have a little look at what we've got down here this is a mushroom that we spotted from away away because it's a large mushroom and in fact behind me out of shot there are two that have uh, got to nearly a foot in diameter and um, they're quite rotten though so they're no good for the purposes of what I'm about to do. What you have is a large mushroom with sponge under the cap and you'll know if you've watched my other videos we'll just work him out on the ground You'll know if you've watched my other videos that as foragers, we can class all mushrooms with sponge under the cap like this as uh, in the wider Belitali family. And we can apply rules to this family to determine whether you've got an edible mushroom or not. Now, the rules that we teach are no red, no blue. And that's red on the pores in particular and on the stem, as you can see there. And then the no blue, I'll show you in just a second. That's something that happens after you damage the mushroom. But I'll just tell you a bit more about this one first. This is uh, the Rubro Belitus Satanus, or the Satan's Belit, or the most toxic Belitus mushroom that we have in the UK. So this is the mushroom that we teach those rules because of this and a, a few of its close relatives. So no red. That's red under the pores, under the cap, on the pores rather, and on the stem. Now, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but on the red stem of this mushroom, you have what we call reticulation. It's like a, a netting pressed onto the stem. Now, there's a nice edible that looks a bit like this that's uh, called the Scarlatina belit. That one's called the dotted stem belit for a reason. It has dots on the stem and that's a very common mushroom. If you see reticulation like that on a mushroom that looks like this in Britain, it's, it's most likely to be uh, the Suillellus, I think, Luridis, the lurid belit, because um, that's reasonably common. But this one has a slightly lighter coloured cap the cap has cracked, that's because uh, we've just had a bank holiday weekend of pure sunshine, something almost unheard of in the UK. But because of that, this mushroom has come up in the rains just beforehand and then the heat has simply made the cap crack. If it was left to grow in ideal conditions, you wouldn't really see that cracking at all. Now the stem again, like I say, you can see that reticulation. And then what I'll do is I'll cut the whole mushroom in half. I have to do this quite quickly now because I think we've got a downpour on its way. I'll cut the whole mushroom in half and you'll see on the stem, on the flesh of the stem and the cap, we'll get this blue staining. You can see it's getting slightly stronger and it's spreading around the flesh of the mushroom. That's what's important. A way of telling the difference between this and the uh, lurid belief is that you get a line between the flesh that goes blue and the, uh, the pores there. That's a kind of red line. But with this mushroom, the Satan's belief, you get the blue staining, but nowhere near as, uh, as vivid as you get on the Scarlatina or the lurid belief, the two most common ones. Now this one, uh, I don't believe it's classed as deadly, but I do know that it is classed as highly toxic and it will make you very, very sick. So, the rules with the uh, Belitus family, or the wider Belitali family, are what I said. No red, no blue. And they are mainly, or we teach those rules mainly because of this mushroom. And a close relative, the, uh, the Legalii, which is, which is quite similar, a bit more vibrantly coloured. 
and there's a couple of others in the UK that you don't want to eat because of this red on the stem and the blue but um, the, the most common one of those I think is the Belitus colopus uh, that's the bitter beech belit and um, that one it isn't toxic but you don't want to eat that one either because it's uh, it's very very bitter as the name suggests now I've cut this mushroom in half so I can give it one last little test to be a hundred percent sure of what I've got and that's by smelling it we use our sense of smell when we're identifying lots of mushrooms and uh, if I'm correct with my ID I'll get hints of garlic from the smell and uh, I most certainly did so here we go an absolutely lovely find as far as I'm concerned because it's a mushroom that I don't see uh, very often at all it likes chalky downland it likes to grow with beech um, and uh, there is a lot of that around in the UK but there aren't a lot of these around so a great day to be a mushroom fan but as a forager this is the sort of mushroom that you need to leave behind unless you really really know what you're doing because this one and a few of its look-alikes are very toxic anyway if you want to find out more Go to www.wildfooduk.com.